I am set. Are you set? I don't think I'm set. <laughs> Actually, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNR stream today on the 15th of August, 2022. I hope you have had a wonderful week uh, so far. And if you haven't, then hopefully this makes your week exciting. Uh, might make my week exciting. I don't know. Uh, it's cool again outside in Sydney land, but hopefully it's getting nice and warm. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that I wake up in the morning and the sun is up. It's, it's, or it's almost up, but it's up enough that I can open the, the blinds and just kind of go, ah yes, sunlight. And then the sun shines in my face and I go, ah, I'm blind. It's a good time of year, you know, the best time of year. Uh, so this stream is going to be just a, a one-off. Just like, test the waters, see how this one game is. And uh, we'll see where it goes, but I don't think it's interesting enough to play through in its entirety. But it's interesting enough to show off in a two-hour stream. So why don't let's uh, let's get into it before the music resets on me. So what? There you go, the music reset on me, and I gotta unmute the audio. Oh, my buttons work this time. I didn't even change them. Uh, so this is a game by a really unknown developer I uh I what do you even say about this game what do you even say about like a lot of a lot of games well that's the name of the game right there uh but there's a lot of weird games that exist on really any console and it's like not many people remember them I actually had this um a chat with a mate about uh Fable, and how Fable to me is kind of like The Last of Us in terms of its popularity. People on that console absolutely like praise it. Um, I'm gonna put an asterisk and say, yeah, but they're remastering it and there's a sequel. But uh, let's say in 2018, when The Last of Us existed on its own. Uh, that game has like its reputation for its time, and then it slowly fades away into. Uh, a long lost tale of a time gone. This game's not good. <laughs> this game's not that. But what I mean is that people will probably remember the big ones. They'll remember the Elder Scrolls. They'll remember uh, Fable. Uh, there's big explosions, there's cars, there's trucks. There's a lot of stuff going on in this video. Uh, and then the uh, Vice President Vanishing Point. There we go. Um, do know that the game itself is going to be significantly louder than the, the video. I always thought it was kind of weird. Um, it has a game is not moving anywhere, but using the full high resolution mode on the PlayStation uh, picture here. That's the box art, sure. Press start. We go in. Look at that. You got all these cool logos on the top. You got to be careful, by the way. If you wait too long, it just backs you out to the, to the other menu. It's kind of weird. Um, but this is... Uh, this is a driving game uh, featuring various licensed cars uh, and it's published by Acclaim. They really want you to know that. Um, I think this game, in my mind, it lives on in a bit of infamy uh, for probably being one of the worst games to control and so bad to control that you, could, you can see this. So... I'll briefly explain how this game is structured. You've got two modes, basically. The tournament mode, where each car has three heats of tournaments. You have to basically come first in that heat, and then you get the gold tick um, for each car. There's the stunt driver mode as well, which is a bunch of like little missions, and they're very exclusive. Um, the time trial mode lets you play ev every race, uh, or any race with any car that you've unlocked. Note that, there are two pages of cars, and you have two cars to start off with. And on top of that, you have one track. You can't even pick the, the other versions. I should have, have clicked on that. Uh, time the loading screens, by the way. They're going to be horrendous. They're actually like 20 seconds, I want to say. Maybe they're not 20. I'm counting the seconds. I'm counting the seconds. Uh, it's 13. It's 13 seconds. It feels like an eternity, 13 seconds. 
Um, Especially because how long does it take to get back into the main menu? It's a really long time. Jeez. You've heard no audio for a bit. That's some menu music. Everyone likes some good menu music. All the menu music and all the music is the synth music. So how about let's just go right in. Let's just show off how the game is to start off. I really like the color uh, selection. You've got this lovely fade between the colors. You can pick a nice color if you want. We'll pick this uh, wonderful spot of yellow. You can do manual automatic transmission. And then here we go. We've got two stages in the heat. Um, some of these heats, they start to go on really long. Um, fortunately, they start off not too bad. Uh, I'm going to try and show a bit of a mix of the two, but I think, how do you make a, a racing game stand out from the pack? That's, I guess, the key thing. And that's what this game tries to tackle. Um, it's structured very oddly. So instead of racing opponents, you effectively are time trying. Also, know how, how much I'm wrestling the car to begin with already. Um, but uh, you're effectively just, you have a, a time. You're just trying to beat the time. It says two minutes 16. You'll have opponent drivers that are ahead in with the yellow arrows, but really all they mean, or all, all that means from them, is that they're not going to be slow guys who you overtake. They're going to be really fast guys who are kind of always keeping up with you, except they're also going to just make their own weird mistakes at points. Uh, but you're not racing anyone, really. You're just racing a clock. Um, and in the end, you've just got a flat time, like a total time you're beating. It's just a, a number. It'd be that number you're in. Um, it'll say you're first, but really that's, um, it's like a, a rally game kind of first. It's like, oh, I mean, yeah, but you can always make up for it. You're not doing any overtakes. Uh, I like how this train never stops. It keeps, that's an eternal train. It keeps going. Uh, the other things, I guess, for a first time presentation is, uh, well, yeah, know how I keep, like, slamming into walls. Um, touching any other cars in this game is just a complete, like, hap. Did I just phase back for a hot second there? Maybe. But it's a complete, like, crapshoot of, like, whether your car is going to go flying. Uh, it's probably not going to be too evident when I start playing this car, but uh, I'll try and play some other cars later on, because you only start with two, and on top of that, there's no cheat codes to unlock them. I think you get one singular cheat code, which, or it's not even a cheat code. I think the only thing on GameFAQ is that if you wait uh, for the demo mode to run and a track plays in the demo mode, that track will be available in the time trial mode. So uh, let's put a name in. There we go. B N D. There you go. You get nine points. Get no points for being slow. Oh, it's not even a flat time. You're literally going for yeah, championship points. I completely forgot. So uh, so this game lives on in infamy in my mind as being a weird driving game I owned. And it was one of the games that was uh, burgled out of the house. So it uh, escaped my memory for a long time. But I got the exact same music track twice. Now here's a fun, fun thing. I'm going to try and pause the game just as the timer starts. There you go. Know how the timer is three center seconds and never increases. If you pause the game somewhere in the first, like, some people have gotten it up to 40 center seconds, but if you're in the first, like, little bit of, uh, if you're in the first, like, little bit of, uh, the clock and you pause the game, it just permanently freezes for the run. It's it's a bizarre glitch. I don't know why it's in the game. Uh, what's also kind of weird is that this game is, or rather this PlayStation version, it's actually a port of a Dreamcast version. Um, you may be wondering why I'm not playing the Dreamcast version. It's because I'm subjecting myself to the same horrors that, uh, well, that I had subjected myself to earlier. Also, oh. Do you see, do you see that? I braked 
I tried turning and I still didn't stop. This game is incredibly brutal. That first stage, at least, it's full of like, you know, fairly easy turns. But again, note how like wide the car is drifting every single time I do a turn. It's it's insane, and it just it'll get worse. It'll get worse. Trust me. Uh. But yeah, it's it's a really odd game for the the car controls. So I think what they were aiming for is that they were aiming for the, the most realistic, like, suspension recreation in a video game. Um, so cars will properly bounce and jump somewhat as they go over, like, hills and, and ramps and stuff. You know, a point for, for um, consideration, and especially, uh, I, I want to note when this game came out. This is a 2001 game. This game only ever came out for the Dreamcast and the and that guy's full dead. And I'm about to crash in the back of this guy, who is also going to be full dead. And he might be full dead. Um, I love how it's showing the time at the top because uh, it, it normally would count down, but it's not right now. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. 2001, as only a Dreamcast and a PlayStation 1 game. Um, there you go. World record, man. World record. I'm not gonna cheat for the rest of these, but, uh, well, maybe I will. Who knows. Usually at the end of one of these races, you get a, um, yeah, you get a, uh, a reward of some kind. It might be a new car. Um, it might not. We'll see. So here you go. You got one little tick up the top, and now there's a heat to... This is one thing I hate. These are both the exact same first and last stage. It's just, you've got another one in the middle. But like, that feels kind of boring, doesn't it? There are also still two laps. So it's the same, like, difficulty. It's just you've chucked another one in the middle. At least if I go to the BMW here. Well, I mean, the first stage is still the same first stage, but different car. Different car. Sure, okay. Uh, so yeah, they, they license like 20 real cars. Um... Did Gran Turismo have any Aston Martins at this point? I think it did. I want to say it did. So I don't think this game really did anything, except I think there's a, a Volkswagen minibus later in the game. Uh, I think that's like your one unique car that you've... Well, there's probably more unique cars that aren't in Gran Turismo, but uh, remember at the beginning of the game, or the beginning like video, there was a truck and it was oncoming? Well, that never happens in the game. You're always driving downstream to- oh my gosh, I'm about to get squeezed. You're always driving- not downstream, you're upstream? You're always driving alongside traffic, and despite always, always being on, like, four-lane roads, uh, you're not really, like, there's no oncoming traffic, ever. The, the challenge comes from having to deal with these guys. Sometimes they decide to rub a band on you, which is kind of weird because you're not bracing them. See, this guy, like, this guy's just zooming. And, and when they rub a band and they do these jumps, it's hilarious. Hopefully we'll catch one uh, in, in the act. There is a lot of traffic. There's a lot of traffic. Hi there, car who's clipping my near plane. Uh... So, I think the problem with the realistic suspension that they've got going on is, uh... Well, yeah, the car just drifts. It just turns. I, uh, I'm spluttering all over this, but, like, it, it's... I don't think... I think... Is this a rear-wheel drive car? Maybe... Oh, that, that guy has gone all over the place. Um... I, th I think, uh, my, my physics analogy would be, uh, you ever play any game and the ragdoll physics just bug out, something clips in the ground and starts pulling itself. That's what happens in this game, except it's not clipping into the ground, it just happens. It's just, that's just how the game works. Uh, I feel like I'm probably taking the game fairly moderately right now. Um, but trust me, I think there's certain stages where you'll just feel it. You'll just feel the pain. Um, I guess the other thing is, how rewarding is... I thought the music just bugged out on me for a moment. I, I was like, just start up with another another catch. 
Oh, that red car is going at it. Um, I don't know who did the music in this game, but uh, I want to say it's like one guy. It's a great big electronic soundtrack. <laughs> uh, it's got some jams here and there. Ah, oh, I didn't beat my last score though. It's close. Uh, it's got a, a decent replay view, I guess. A lot of a lot of games at this time, they really wanted to nail the replay view because that was like the Gran Turismo selling point for a bit. The fact that you could do your replays and save them to your memory card that was that's a feature that uh kind of goes undecided. Um, not that time to beat five minutes. This is my other kind of issue with the game is that like these are all like four lane highways and two and a half minutes a lap. Just it feels like a long lap, man. It also feels a bit punishing if you uh, don't get enough time to, to catch up with. Uh, I guess on the visual front as well, uh, it looks fine. I feel like I probably was and still am a little like kind to this game's graphics. The car models look. Like, the texture actually looks really nice on it. I think the model's not crazy amazing, but the texture does the job. And I've just hit a jump, and now I'm just kind of off walls. There's a lot of neat tunnels, but you can definitely see, like, some, some visual artifacting going on. There's uh, a lot of, like, objects that, you know, are in front of others and then aren't. A lot of shadows that like uh, that's a train track i don't know how there's like a flat shadow under it but sure okay at least like a bridge is okay but yeah it's a train track there's clearly holes in the train track but uh it's completely didn't think that being said uh yeah at least your car gets like a shadow over it so sure okay we got a lot of these like nice bridges um it runs stable but uh I'm not too sure if this is 30 FPS or like somewhere a little underneath, but it's it's 30. It's certainly 30, but it's in the PlayStation's kind of low resolution mode, and it does kind of feel low resolution, especially given one that there's a Dreamcast version that's certainly running at 640 by 480, but also um... oh, th there you go, there you go. That's an example where it's like just casually. Your contact results in a fairly wild, a wild trip. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's still there's also like some things like the the road markers get kind of wobbly. The lane markers get a little wobbly. Oh. This is exactly like cars just lose traction. Yeah, like I'm only going like 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour is a fair bit of speed, probably especially up a hill, but I guess people were maybe expecting something a bit more, like, stable to control. It feels like they've just gone, turned all the assists off, made it, uh, nigh ultra-realistic, but on the flip side, it's like, well, I mean, I'm, uh, your steering goes all whack like that, like, I just, I just lent too far on the inside, tap the wall, and then the game was like, oh, okay, it's been a it's like the car's like center of weight is like right on the back wheels. I think that's what it feels like. Which is not the case. Usually cars are... A lot of cars are front loaded. Very few cars are like fully rear loaded. Sometimes you'll get like decently on the on the middle of the car. But uh, I, don't, I don't think this BMW... I don't think this BMW is one of them. The boat. You got you got a boat. That's good. Where does this game take place? Because uh, right now uh, you've probably seen one name of a track. I what is going on here, man? This, okay, and he's back. He's going back at it, and he's zooming ahead. And now he's about to break check me. Ooh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna zoom past. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm probably kind on this game visuals. I'm oh, sorry, this game's visuals, but uh, I guess the thing to note, it's 2001. I kept saying it's competing against Gran Turismo, and particularly Gran Turismo 2, but you know, at this point, it's competing against Gran Turismo 3. 
coming out uh, the same year. This, I think, was a very early release in 2001, so not quite, but... Oh, boy. Like, I think the only reason why it's on the PS1 is because the PS2 has backwards compatibility. So by making a PS1 game, it feels like you're covering both bases. It's like, oh, okay, it's on the PlayStation. It's got the big install base of the PlayStation 1 and the uh, very predicted rise in the PS2. I guess the PS2 is kind of early, so um, it also makes sense, but I don't know. It, it, it would have been so much nicer had it been committed to being a PS2 game. Um, and yeah, I should give the Dreamcast version a try, but yeah, usually usually they don't skimp on having a GameCube, a GameCube? A Dreamcast version. Um, sorry. No, they don't skimp on porting a Dreamcast version to another console. Usually, the PlayStation is fairly good at downgrading as long as you, you know, don't stall out your loading screens like this. For reference as well, you're getting all these pictures of, like, a, a car in, like, an x-ray car. There's, like, a skeleton man in it. You unlock these short videos that are literally, like... They would have just done this as a promotional logo. Like, that's that. That's that's the short movie. What about the secret? Well, uh, ugh, they're both locked. What about the game's stats? Uh, like, <laughs> they're just kind of noting. It's like, yep, there's 16 cars in the game. You gotta do all three heats. Unlock the cars. Unlock the stages. There's 13 stages. Um, and then try and do the stunt points and get movies. It sounds simple enough. Uh, this is why I say it's probably bland as to do a... Again, that's the same two stages. That's the same two stages. So, why don't I do this? 12 minutes, man. 12 minutes. I think I think one of the... IGN's got a really scathing review of this. They gave it like a four and a half. Um, four and a half feels like harsh, but then it's like, well, I mean, I'd also skew my metrics like I, I feel like if i was to rate games in the same way i'd be like nah man i'd reserve so much of the highest space because there's so many games that are better than this i think they actually note as well other ps1 races like um uh colin mccray 2 also look at that we're going reverse it's at least something different um but yeah colin mccray 2 is like oh that's a gnarly amazing looking game on the ps1 and i am so surprised they never um that game never came to the PS2, actually. Maybe it did come to the PS2. No, I don't think it did. But it's like, oh, the PS1 version is like, it's such a treat. It's such a treat, that, that game. Uh, as for this game, uh... Yeah, I guess the Heat 2s and the Heat 3s start to add on difficulty. I think the the secret to doing well in this game is to commit in a straight line. Because the moment you start turning, your speed goes right down. So you might as well just point yourself kind of straight and go for it. Just go on a straight... well, don't do that, but... Just go on a straight line. I actually nailed it. It's gone. There you go, ahead. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. That two in the corner is going to keep, like, strobing, isn't it? <laughs> so I guess this is a good, uh... Whoa. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is a good kind of podcast game, if that makes sense. I think that, oh, that, you see what I mean? You see what I mean? They just, they veer forward and then they go on so ham. I think I was so hand. They're, they're just out of there. Oh, I, I want to turn. I want to turn. I. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, well, it's a good podcast game as long as you're not having to fight people. Which happens a lot, apparently. Uh, but I wanted to kind of mention this uh, period of. Uh, yeah, weird, weird races. I think uh, one other racer that they uh, they mentioned in that IGN article was, uh, or review rather, 
is a is a Jared Labonte, um, which is a very like bizarrely named game because it's the third game of the Toka Race Driver um, franchise, and they gave it a completely different name in the U.S. Uh, but point is, is that yeah, like there's a lot of like these weird games that look like they're one-offs, um, and then maybe they've got like a franchise going on with them. Maybe they're. Um, is there a new thing? I'm gonna try and do the pause glitch. Nope, didn't get it that time. That's okay, because then you just do it normally. You just do it legit, because you're good. There's at least like the visual variety in the tracks, but the. The practical variety is, uh, oh, no, 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 no. There is a reset button, by the way, if you're really, like, crashing out. But what it does is that it holds you above the ground for painstaking, like, seven seconds. So, me spinning around is not fun. It's got the little mini lights going okay, though. I know in the faster cars, this, like, lip here is absolutely, like, gnarly. Especially because I can't see in front of me all of a sudden. I'm about to crash into one thing. Oh. Pick up so much speed going down here. Every single car can't handle that, apparently. What is going on? Okay, sure. Sure. Uh... But yeah, there's a, there's a lot of, like, weird PS1 races. In fact, I guess there's always the, um, as I'll refer to it, the genre of a console. That seems to be, like, an interesting trend where, like, for every console generation, there's definitely, like, one, one kind of big genre of game that really stands out. I think for the 360, um, it was just first-person shooters. Just the whole time. There were so many, like, big and amazing first-person shooters. I think for the PlayStation 1, it was driving games. That was the big category on the PS1. I think the Nintendo 64 nailed the, the appeal of the 3D platformer. So even though you did have good 3D platformers on the PS1, uh, like Crash Bandicoot, um, Klonoa, uh, it's not really 3D, but um, Spyro is more of a collectathon, but you can accept it if you want. Uh, it's like, okay, well, there's Banjo Kazooie, there's Super Mario 64, there's. Uh, Brain was about to say Glover. That's not it. Uh, Gex was on both. Gex was on both. Nintendo 64 didn't have a lot of games, so that makes my pool kind of hard to pick. But I'm pretty certain there was uh, another 3D platform that people really liked. Who knows? Uh, and then obviously uh, everyone knows the SNES is maybe an RPG machine. Um, or the Vita. The, both of them were that. Um, but yeah, sometimes the same genre doesn't appear twice, or sometimes it's uh, split by uh, a generational gap. Um, but it's kind of interesting that, like, yeah, like, racing games were the thing to, to chase. I think it's because there's always the breakthrough game, which would be, like, the top seller off the platform. So, in the PS1 case, uh, Gran Turismo, that's, that's the best-selling game, and I think, I think a lot of developers tried to chase that because they thought that, uh, I, am I about to crash into someone? I, okay. I think triangle is the, the view button. I was hitting R1, I, I forgot what R1 is. You get two lovely chase cameras and a bumper cam. The bumper cam swerves like it's Ridge Racer. It's, it's, it's a gnarly swerve. If anything, I guess Ridge Race would probably set a, uh, an example of what the PS1 could do, because it's a, it's a launch title, and uh, Namco knew exactly what the, the PS1 could pull off. Um, but yeah, no, I think people were trying to chase the success of Gran Turismo, and especially, I don't know if uh, racing games were expensive to make relative to other things. Um, obviously in the PS2 and the, the Xbox's case, uh, actually I don't know if... Um, GTA was a uh, the best seller on the Xbox, but it certainly was on the PS2. Um, so you had a lot of games afterwards try and chase the, the Grand Theft Auto. 
uh, kind of structure and appeal, and uh, it's a varying success. I think Saints Row was a, good, uh, a high selling one. Um, Mafia was another one, I think. Uh, True Crime, which led to Sleeping Dogs, and I do think Sleeping Dogs is a sleeper hit. I think it actually is one that deserves the, the GTA moniker. And then uh, that kind of translates into the Ubisoft game, the Far Cry uh, 3, basically. The oh no, Assassin's Creed, one of the Assassin's Creed's. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, like, what was another one? It's really tough on Nintendo systems, because Nintendo's own games do disproportionately much better on their own consoles compared to other third-party titles. There's people out there who only buy first-party Nintendo games. I probably, I don't own that many third-party Nintendo games on, uh, or third-party games on my Switch. Uh, mostly because I get along with my PC. Um, I think the only one, the only two third-party games I can think of are uh, Dragon Quest XI because that was only on the Switch for a bit, not the PS4, but the Switch version is, is good. And uh, Mario and Rabbids, which it's a Ubisoft game, developed and published, but uh, it counts somewhat, I guess. Other than that, oh, I think I've got, I've got Octopath Traveler as well. But, yeah, like, I, I do wonder whether this game was easy to make. Um, I think the Wikipedia page notes that uh, there were like eight developers, and uh, they worked on this game for about 18 months, which feels like it's on the longer side of games at that time. Usually, um, it's interesting that the, the length of game development has increased just dramatically, and possibly exponentially. Um, as in, games in 1980 took, like, maybe six months to make. Then in 2000, they were expected to, to take a year, maybe a year and a half. Now they're expected to take, like, four years. If, if your new game IP is, like, you're sitting on that IP for so long while you're developing your idea and prototyping ideas and constantly fleshing out your game. Maybe three years? Usually usually three years for a lot of shorter time. I, I don't think... Um, like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, what's an example of like a big game that came out this year? Like, I don't think Elden Ring, for example. I don't think Elden Ring was... Uh, actually, was Elden Ring supposed to come out in 2020? Or was that just like hype demos? I think it was just hype demos. I don't know if they committed to releasing it in 2020. Um, but I think they were trying to push it for 2021 and they missed it by a few months. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing too wacky has happened in this game so far. Mildly disappointing. Uh, <laughs> If anything, I guess that's kind of, maybe that's the gist of it, is that it's a, uh, it is a generic racer, and the fact that you're not racing really against other people, maybe that does kind of slam it down for a bit. I don't know why I owned this as a kid. I think it was just, it's another car racer and a newer one. Um, because yeah, if it came out in 2001, then I would have had to be, uh, either four or five. I don't think I was really making too many decisions. I think I was just like, oh, it's got cars on the cover, it's got to be good. And then, even I as a kid, could kind of feel this is not as fun as Grand Turismo. Like, it made sense, but it was kind of aggravating because I didn't know how to, like... Like, I didn't let off the accelerator like I do now. I go around a corner and I'm just like, oh, like, I'll just leave it. Or I'll just, like, ride up against that guy and, and kind of, like, minimize the amount of directional change. Like, I, I I think about it more now, but I don't necessarily think it's uh, it makes the game that easy, because I'm still, like, spinning around. It, I've never played another PS1 game where you just casually spin around after, like, tapping the wall in a weird way. It's... It is a bizarre one to me. Um, I think also the fact that you don't have, like, an amazing camera angle, because the camera... You know, if you're going downhill, the car the car is directly in front of the road. You cannot see 
the uh, the, the uh, vanishing point, the uh, name of the game. Actually, that does remind me, I think one t uh, technological thing they were trying to accomplish was a uh, no draw distance. Really? Like, you can see right to the end of whatever is in front of you. Uh, which, I think to alleviate that, they put lots of curves and chicanes and kind of other things in the road. Uh, things such that you're not seeing directly in front of you that far. Um, which isn't that kind of ironic. There is no vanishing point in this game. Nothing vanishes because it's never... There's no point of it vanishing. Um, that's kind of intriguing. It's bound to be doing like LOD swapping, but it seems to do it pretty subtly. I'm, I haven't been able to see anything too, too wrong, too off. Uh, a new player vehicle, okay. How about let's spoil ourselves with another player vehicle and then do the stunt mode um, for a bit and then, uh, I don't know, toy around for a bit. So, uh, so yeah, down the, uh, I don't think you're gonna get the Volkswagen car in this. Um, the tournament mode uh, doesn't let you play with the secret vehicles. The secret vehicles are, I think, only there once you're really getting rewards for these. Uh, there is a wrench at the end, I think. I, I, I don't know what CWG Rally is off the top of my head. Um, it's not off-road rally, though. I think it is literally just some mode using the existing cars and tracks. So you're not really missing out on anything there. Nothing screams better than having every car in yellow. Listen, every car in yellow is... It's a treat. Uh, is this literally the same two stages that I just... Yeah, it's, it's the same two stages. But you got mirrored reverse on the final stage. I don't know off the top of my head, but I think the, the pattern is... Two tracks, two laps, and then three tracks, two laps, and then three tracks, three laps. I'm gonna say that's the pattern. Um, but it's it's remarkable. There's 13 tracks in the game. Why why am I only driving on the same handful of tracks? Because there's a there's a nighttime highway stage. I remember this off the top of my head, and it's got these like ridiculous like curved barriers. They're like slopes, like 45 degrees away from you, um, uh, or rather into the track. Uh, and it just means that the, like, if you go, like, close to the sides, you don't just hit a wall and slow down. Your car is like, it's gonna be like flipping all the time. Yeah, the fact that all of these, or maybe not all, but like a lot of these tracks take two and a half minutes to get around, it, it adds up. It feels very sluggish and like the game's not got a lot of a lot of ideas um, oh there it is there it is oh, oh no oh no how do you oh that's what I, that's what i remember that's what i remember the like the physics don't they don't when when the cars get a bit faster and this car certainly feels a little faster um at least it didn't punish me too hard for Having a reset there, I didn't manually reset it or automatically figure it out at some points. Uh, let's, we're just gonna do a recovery drive. Imagine licensing, like, you, you're like the guy who licenses Alfa Romeo to games like this, and then literally does that in the game, and you're like, oh. It also doesn't do damage. There's no damage on the cars, you just kind of drive them forward. Damage was a kind of rare thing, because a lot of developers kind of thought they couldn't do justice to it. Either the car would break in ways, but then it's like, well, would you want the car to handle worse? Um, I think a lot of games also licensed their cars under a clause that said, don't damage the virtual cars. Because <laughs> otherwise then you're making up like details about under the hood and we don't want to disclose that. Like, usually it's that. You can see the car just bouncing, it's going. Uh, obviously no working mirrors as well, they just like, they hang off there, they at least put in the effort to have mirrors hanging there, but... Sup potato, how's it going? 
Hope you're having a, a swell day today. I know I am. Uh, my Alfa Romeo just uh, spun around 20 times a second. Uh, it's a very spinny, very spinny Alfa Romeo. So, uh, so the topic I'm rambling about to myself is uh, just, I guess, the genres of the console. I was kind of making the, the case that there's a lot of PS1 races out there. A lot of games tried to imitate Gran Turismo because it was a best-selling title, and that guy is... He's not gone. I've, I've kept him on the road, but my forward momentum is gone. Um, oh, now it's gone. Oh. <laughs> it's... Yeah, I don't know why games take so long to make now. I still am under the opinion that, um, like the, like games take too long and are too expensive and don't have to be that large or long. Like, as much as, and, and I know, I know, as much as like game developers want to push 70 bucks, uh, US as the big target, it's like, I don't know, you could just make the game shorter and make them more often. And don't, and, and, and I'm still under the, opinion that most DLC doesn't have to be DLC and it could be a separately released game. If you say, oh, but what if, like, you know, it costs less to make the DLC because it uses assets from the main game. Just double bundle them, add common elements if you want, like do a do a Valve common uh, source engine files. I always love that, yeah, because Note as well, like, Steam installs every game to a common directory. The games themselves can figure it out if they want to. They can install it to two folders if they really want to, I think. But they don't. I don't know why. There's not many expandalones these days, and, uh... I don't think there's a great reason. I think they could just do it. Oh, wait, sorry. The, the reason is money, of course. If I, if I sell you DLC, you have to buy the base game, so then I make the base game cheap and then I force all the obsessive compulsive people to, to uh, look at their incomplete Steam collections and go, ah yes, you'd wish you owned uh, this myriad of skins. I'm a little salty right now because I, I've bit the bullet, I've tried playing Borderlands 2, um, which I bought at launch, probably this time 10 years ago. Uh, I thought it was a fine game, definitely or fair game, I'd more say. Uh, definitely improved upon a lot of elements in the first game, but uh, then I played the DLC. Maybe not at launch, actually. <laughs> I think I just kind of went through most of the game at launch. Um, we're going through the DLC now. It's like, well, the first one is okay. The second one is okay. And then the third one is like, oh. And my main issue is that there's uh, these voodoo witch doctor enemies that are so tanky, and then they have multiple abilities, sometimes they, they all can hit you with an elemental attack, they all can uh, get you with a uh, uh, various other attacks they've got, like sometimes they turn into Taz the Tasmanian Devil and turn into a tornado, uh, sometimes they uh, turn into a black hole and just kind of suck you in, or sometimes they just spew, like, you know, attacks all over the place at you, uh, but yeah, they're so they're so tanky. I've really committed now. I've put in the effort. I've actually beaten the DLC, and I went, huh? The bosses, I not only were easier, as in I didn't die on the, the bosses, but also they were quicker than individual enemies that I was sometimes required to fight and often. At least I could walk past, but they're still all over the place. Very bizarre. So right now I'm beating some of the side content just to experience the joys of uh, the uh, dialogue. And I'm facing the wrong way. Cool. And I'm going the wrong way. That's cool. Uh... I mean, I, I did say I wasn't going to continue on 
with this. Uh, is that worth three? Or that's worth six? Okay, I'm still, I'm still good. We're still good in that front. New garage option. What is a garage option? Garage option. It's crazy, so. Um... But, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm like, man, Borderlands 2 is a weird game because they market it for the obsessive compulsive people. There's too much, like, DLC in there. What is a garage option? What do they mean by that? Because it's just got, like, more tracks, which, look at that! There's a new track at the beginning there. Um, oh, tune-up shop. Sorry, now I can go into a car and I can only change the damping. Only the damping. I can't change anything else. What does it mean? Oh, here you go. I wonder if the game is easier if you understand how all these settings work. I I look at it and I go, I've got no idea what flywheel inertia does. Um, I've got a decent idea of how of like um, brake bias, uh, camber, ride height, um, which I feel like having ride height like all the way up. Oh, actually, I don't know. I, I lo <laughs> I'm like, simultaneously, the car doesn't stick to the road, and it also bumps. So, like, either I'm, go I'm gonna have to make one of them way worse than it already is, so. Uh, so let's check out the stunt driver mode. The stunt driver mode consists of a bunch of these events, uh, where it says, You have 34 seconds to negotiate the ramp that sits behind you. Points are awarded for the time taken. Um, and then it basically says to get a perfect score, you must jump at least 75 meters in 14 seconds or less. Um, I don't know what's with the hint. Gain extra distance by trying to land with your front wheels first. It's like, uh, how does that really happen? But uh, the whole point is that uh, when they say, oh, 75 seconds, um, or sorry, 75 meters in 14 seconds, they're saying like, yeah, that's how the scoring works. Is that you get scored individually for time, getting to the end and the distance in this case. Uh, the time is important because uh, if you don't land in time, then you're going too slow. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And uh, in this case, I didn't quite hit the ground quite far in the, in the distance. So I did the time, but I could probably afford to spend a bit of the time doing it again. Now, fortunately, you can restart and it doesn't hit a loading screen. So at least it's that. Uh, it's at least like a uh, interesting that they've got these challenge maps. Um, and uh, my computer is having a moment. Is it having a moment? That is not as good as the last score, though. Um, yeah. I don't know why you can hear it having a moment. I don't know if I'm going to land before 14 seconds. I'll come in with 96. 96 is a good score. And then, and then you exit out. The stage is ultra quick. But, hey, I mean, at least it's something visually a di bit different. Maybe I could probably just nail all of these on the stream. Who knows? Uh, so this one, you have to slalom, tag the checkbox at the opposite end of the arena, and return to the finish box. Uh, make make a fast turn. That's the key. Yep. So. But it is a. Uh, I think the weirdest part is like this developer doesn't exist on Wikipedia, and they don't seem to have made any games after this. This this just seems to be like I think they've got a few other games like 3D Lemmings. I think is under these guys' name. Uh, my circle is too wide. My circle is too wide. I touched the red. It's bad. What is this red made out of? It's just like weird striped material, but it's like, oh, it's just like a... It's just a, Oh, it's, it's just... It's just a curb. Why does it offset the car so hard? The car is just, oh, it, it's angry every time I do anything in this game. Like that. Like not in the, the zone at the end. Oh my gosh. Uh. 
uh, another game I actually beat this week was uh, Pilot Wings, the original SES game. I think I played it ages ago, but I know I abused emulator save states. And uh, if, if you're playing a game on the Switch Online, you're probably going to feel the same way as well, because uh, how Pilot Wings is structured is that there's four, so for reference, this is a SNES launch title, pretty much to demonstrate how cool Mode 7 is. Um, and to be honest, it is kind of cool. It, it works really nicely. I, I enjoy it. But uh, how uh, the game's structured is that there's uh, four vehicles. You've got a plane. You've got these parachuting challenges where you hop out of a helicopter. Uh, oh, does that count with 100 or no, not quite? I'll take 96 again because I'll, I'll be fine for a bit. Um, you've got these, yeah, these, the parachuting where you try and land on a target. Uh, uh, a rocket belt, which uh, you hover around, try and fly through some rings and come back down. And a uh, single crisscross. This this one is also one to demonstrate how, how nutty the physics can get because uh, it's a forced jump. Ugh. And uh, the last one is a hang glider where you ride air currents and try and land in a zone. Uh, they're all fairly simple. I think the plane is probably the most exciting and it has the, the greatest jam known to man. Um, uh, but, uh, different stages in the game, uh, there's your crisscross by the way, you gotta do a jump like that and then hope that, hope that you jump the crisscross alright. The U-turn is the ansiest part of the whole ordeal. Actually no, the landing is, the landing is, uh, I, the, what part of, hitting the zone did the game just decide nah man nah you didn't cross the zone like um uh i don't think i've got no i'm not i'm not far enough um but yeah the different stages in the game uh pick uh two to four of the vehicle or of the yeah of the aircraft types and uh requires you to do a challenge with them and the challenges require you to get points for having your accuracy which uh isn't that kind of like this, basically, where your, your speed, your accuracy, and uh, your propensity to not crash. Um, I think that might have actually been way better. Sick! Okay, if you get 100, you never have to play that stage again. And uh, it said there were 1,500 points, so there's only 15 of these stages. I'm curious whether I'll play all of them this time. I don't think you have to get like, you don't have to actually max out 15,000, but they do get kind of picky. It's like, look how, uh, well, actually it's not too bad right now, but they do, they do start to get it up. So, uh, this one you gotta do, oh yeah, this one, you gotta, you gotta get the, the, the balloons, the targets, Ugh. um, the bit that gets annoying about pilot wings is that if you suck at one of the vehicles, and in my case, particularly landing with the hang glider, um, you have to succeed with one run of all the vehicles. Oh, this is, this is, sorry, this is not the blue one, this is, uh, up and up and down and then hitting the, the zone at the end. And then going back and doing it four more times. go uh but yeah no in in pilot wings if you if you mess up one vehicle then you jeopardize the whole run with all the other vehicles now a lot of the stages they'll have like a bonus game uh if you if you're a crazy good lander um and uh the bonus games allow you to to earn a lot of lost points but they're not uh they're not the easiest to get to all the time. Uh, I think I'm going to be just shy of 100. 97. I'll accept 97. Um, so, yeah, it, it's one where it's like, yeah, it's it's trivial with... Um, uh, what's up, Basil? Uh, it's going pretty good. I'm just talking about uh, Pilot Wings and how uh, I've beaten it for the first time without safe states. Um, I think lots of perseverance. It, it definitely took me about four hours total. Um, I was pretty good at doing the, the plane stages. I'd never botched up the plane stages. The, um, the hoverbelt stages, uh, this is, is twists and turns. 
Oh, this is just a long, a long slalom. This is just, uh, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I, I never struggled with the plane stages in Pilot Wings, but it was the, the, the hang glider ones. The usually I'd start off with the, the, the um, skydiving, the parachuting. But the hang glider ones are just like, oh, they get to me all the time. Oh, this one's mean because they've just got like a really mean, like, notch in the slalom. You'd expect it to be the exact same one. And it's not. I, I put a little thing in. I turn around, and away we go. The other direction. Look at that. They've at least got, like, doing tracks in the tire tracks. Am I gonna get it? Oh, actually, I think I got it. I think I got the hundo. I got the hundo. Nice. Cool. Uh... This is... <laughs> this... This is my national beast. This... This is... I, you, you've actually hit the nail on the head. This is totally just them trying to take a dig at Gran Turismo's license test. Because the license tests are a surprisingly, like, nuanced element of Gran Turismo. There's something that, like, the first-time player probably just goes in, tries, struggles to get the bronzes, and calls it a day. Uh, and then they play the rest of the game. But then it's like, yeah, there's something real like nifty about the license test it's just like it's a small challenge and quite a bunch of them uh maybe not in the first game but in the second game they introduce these unique challenges like the the slalom gates this one i look at and i go oh my gosh so you gotta hop and get the get the balloons and don't just do a yui like i did Oh boy, I think this is a rear, a rear driven car. What do you think? Oh boy. Oh boy, it's so heavy. Alright, let's see if we can get these two. There you go. What is it with PS1 games and popping balloons? They do it a lot. Everyone was mean to balloons. Uh, there we go. There we go. Got that. I think I was supposed to have 20 seconds left over. I have no idea how you're supposed to have 20 seconds left over. That cyan one is just there in space. I think it gives you five points per balloon. Yeah, okay, but let's take another stab at that. Because, uh, there must be a better way. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, isn't that kind of weird? You're, you're totally right that this is, like, working on the Grand Christmas. Uh,. License test. That's another game that like does license test. I don't think it's quite as directly uh, comparable, but that, that blue balloon's gonna bite me in the butt later. Um, but uh, I guess Crazy Taxi's got the the Crazy Box test. Uh, where you've got these little challenges you got to do, but then there's obviously the game. There's the Crazy Taxi. Uh, uh, yeah, like Grant, I mean, if, if you had to do this in Gran Turismo, like, oh man, this, this is kind of nutty in Gran Turismo. Although, I say that and then it's like, Gran Turismo had to drive on the moon in one case. Uh, I don't think that's going to be great on time. No, it gave me six on the time. It's not much better. Hey, right, we'll take one more stab and then uh, just move on. I think I needed to do that. Uh, Gran Turismo 6 has a, a mission that you just has three missions where you just drive a buggy on the moon, and it's like experience the joys of low gravity driving, and it's like what, what is like. Very bizarre. Um, 
I never played five and six, or, or sport, or now seven. Um, but oh boy, like it just sounds absolutely hilarious. I mean, I'm the kind of guy who likes you know knocking out of cones. I got a very simple brain. This game doesn't have cones. For being, like, real, like, big on the physics, I'm amazed there's no cone challenges. I don't think I'm going fast enough to get- Oh, I'm not going fast enough. Alright, okay, I've got the strat, I just need the execution. Oh. It's not, it's not kind. This is not a kind challenge. I think, I think as a kid, I remember this challenge and went like, nah, man. Stuff that. It is kind of brutal. It's brutal on time. Cause like, you wanna you wanna pull back enough that you can do the jumps, but like it's not clear how far back you have really gotta like line yourself up. Res. There you go. Turn around. Call it a day. I think I can do it in like two more jumps. Maybe. Actually, it might be good. Alright. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. There we go. Uh, 89. I'll, I'll, I'll take 89. Uh, the coffee break. The net. Oh, the labyrinth one. The labyrinth one. Oh. I'm trying to think which one is my like favorite coffee break one. The the labyrinth one was all right. I hated the one that was just the cone maze. Um, although I will say that was one of the few golds I could get as a kid. Um, negotiate the ramp that sits behind you. Tag the checkbox and return to the finish box. Oh, I just saw the name of the challenge. It's just. They just demand you do a barrel roll. And in other games, it's like, I think I was playing um, Asphalt 9. I know, it just, it's a mobile game and it's got a terrible gacha mechanic. Uh, but it's like, it's got these like real cheap, uh, real cheap uh, like barrel roll mechanics. This is like, nah man, they, they require you to... That was my barrel roll. Uh, I, nope, nope, nope. That was my barrel roll, see? I wonder if I could do that better, because I'm looking at it going, uh, uh, <laughs> that's very bizarre, and I don't know how it counted. I think they tell you off if you don't flip. So, oh. Well. I think I flipped too much. Where does it reset me? Uh, you know, the back of the very beginning. Why not just fail me at that point? Like, just, just call it. I, I'm, I'm half my time down. All right, I just want a clean barrel roll. That is not clean. And I'm upside down again. You know how that's gonna end up. I always wonder how much uh, games get play tested because it's just I see this and I go like I oh, don't know man how likely are you to, to do a smooth barrel roll like that and not overkill it as well. Ninety three, ninety three. All right, one more attempt. I know, right? It's like oh, you got ninety three. It's good, but no, no, they they start demanding that you get like. 96 in every single challenge or something like that. It's like, I think you have to be like 40 points shy of Nop, nop, nop oh. oh, these flips These flips, these dips, these trips I got. I'm feeling good about this one. I'm feeling good about this one. 
<laughs> oh no. So this this is the reason why uh I'm leaving this as a I'm only playing it tonight kind of game because I look at this and I go, nah man. Nah. Nah, no <laughs> no way <it> was <laughs> Because this game this game is, is uh it's um what's the term? It doesn't feel deterministic. It's it's uh it's a doozy. <laughs> oh no no like the the real reason is just because there's only 13 tracks in this game. And uh the way the championship or the tournament mode is set up is like it's already repeating so many tracks. I like I did four or five tournaments just earlier and it's like I think I experienced five tracks in in uh I don't think we got any better. Okay. I experienced five tracks in like thirteen events or twelve events. It oh uh, if when you when you watch the VOD, write this down, watch the VOD and jump to 38 minutes. Because I I hit the most like wicked what? I don't know. I hit the wall and suddenly I'm just going spinning around crazy. Uh there's another slalom. Okay, you can't dock this game too much, because it's got the Dodge Viper. We have to honor every single game that's got the Dodge Viper in it. Did the Dodge Viper ever come in green? I don't know if it did. A lot of, a lot of games decided to just color things in their own way. I think the Dodge Viper is just a... Oh, it's a... I just hit the view replay. I don't want to view the replay. I want to restart. Oh boy, I thought the cars already like skidded so much, but no. The Dodge Viper is the skidder of the skidders. Oh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to muscle it. I'm trying to trying to muscle it around. It just goes. Oh no, poor Dodge Viper. How'd they do this wrong? They played Gran Turismo. I thought everyone uses the Dodge Viper. It's got to be good. And then one, no, everyone used the Supra. Oh no. Does the Dodge Viper re really handle like this? Because I've never, like, I've only really driven it in, like, Gran Turismo, and I know Gran Turismo is, like, every car is probably too grippy for its own good. How is that not touching the zone? <laughs> like, how is that, like, nah, 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 you're too early. Because I'm fairly certain they don't... I, oh, I don't know if they do a four wheels check. Well, that was a bit too wide. Oh boy. I guess 15 challenges feels like it goes from like 0 to 100 in like no time. Whereas, like, if there's one thing Gran Turismo 2 did, it made you work for those licenses, man. You had to do 60 of them. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, son. I don't think any Gran Turismo game does more licensed tests than four. With a... Uh, how, how many total? 86? Or 85? 85 is such like a gnarly amount. That's inclu- Oh, I just hit continue, so now I have to sit through a loading screen. I hit down, game was like, nah, you're going down twice. Ugh. Why does it take so long to load the main menu, you know? One day we'll 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 find out the mystery of the the skeleton man. Think about it. This is a right-hand drive, which means you could tell this game was made by British people. Like I'm playing the U.S. version. There's still a right-hand skeleton man. All right, all right, we're going good. We're going good. We're going good. No, I'm. Uh, GD4 easily has most tests, but GDPSP felt so tedious. 
I never played the, the PSP one too much. I just know that, like, you kind of had to do free events in order to, like, make money. In order to really, like, do starting progressions. Um, I gotta give it, like, an actual spin at some point. Uh, it's such, like, a mystery to me. Gran Turismo on the PSP. Because it's just like, I, I'm always impressed by how much content gets crammed onto Gran Turismo 4 to begin with. The fact that almost all of it is, I, like, I think the car selection is the one thing that's, like, skipped out. But, like, it's got most, if not all, the tracks. It might actually have all of them, I'm not too sure. And I stopped in front of it again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a shame. And it's a shame because everyone keeps wanting the exact same Gran Turismo mode, like, and then Gran Turismo 7 is like, I don't know if Gran Turismo 7 still kind of like buggers it up in some way, but I remember, um, people yelled about Gran Turismo 6 like that. At least 5 felt normal, I think 5's only got a, like, a weird car hybrid, where it's like they didn't, like, half the or not even half, most of the cars are like ripped straight out of Gran Turismo 4 and lack certain HD features, so they lack cockpits and stuff like that, and it's like, you've got such a quality difference in your game. Uh, I'll take it. I, I'm a second over, but I'll take it, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, doesn't he have a night or evening tracks, doesn't have Smoky Mountain Complex String either, which were originally going to be on it. Why, why skip Smoky Mountain? Complex String, I'm like, Sure, it's, it's neat, but like, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's a bit painful. This Ford Focus feel looks too boxy. I don't think the Ford Focus is like that boxy, is it? It lacks a number plate as well. Uh, so you gotta pop all the balloons with the color, sorry, pop all the color balloons, tag the checkbox at the opposite end. Um, but uh, no night or evening tracks, is that like, as in... It's, it's lacking, um, like, special stage, and I think that was the only night tracks. Oh. I don't remember this one much, which makes me think I just kind of, like, whizzed over it. It kind of feels like it's set up for you already, like, these balloons on the side aren't particularly out of the way, but I think it's also the... This car is not like... I take it back! I take it back! No special stage, no Hong Kong. Oh, no Hong Kong! Ah, oh, Nothing was better than, like, absolutely piling up into those, like, <laughs> those ridiculous happens. But also, like, negotiating 90 degree angles feels fun. And the Hong Kong stage is great. The Hong Kong stage is also very pretty. Very, very pretty looking. That's a, that's a shame they lack the, the Hong Kong stage. Um, I would like every Gran Turismo game to be a, a, um, a successor to the last, but uh, I, I feel like it also um, comes to, I guess, the same kind of reasoning that Super Smash Bros. like is inevitably going to have to do, which is we don't want to create a game with this much content every single time. Uh, even if it sounds like, oh, you could just port it over and not, like, provide upgrades, it's like, eh, people are gonna, like, sometimes know. Sometimes, though, I don't mind, like, having an extra content, to be honest. Uh, oh, Red Rock Raceway. Man, Red Rock Ra Raceway needs to come back as well. That and, uh, Tahiti Maze. If Tahiti Maze, I don't know if Tahiti Maze is in all of them. Smoky Mountain North is like, you know, bread and butter, but to eat, oh my goodness, but to eat maize is, you know, where boys turn to men. It's, it's, uh, it's how to, how to tell the weeds. Oh, I don't know if they got rid of to eating maize, but I don't think they do have it. I should look it up. I should really look it up.
You know what's the the worst part? I I was tempted to do a like let's let's do a little bit of of Gran Turismo on stream, but then I uh I feel like I could actually beat the first game. Like just maybe not like a full do every single race in the game because uh some, oh my goodness I'm having zero fun time. But like um well like you know do the license tests and work your way to beating the the world um. World Cup, what's the name of the, the cup at the end of Grand Turismo 1? I feel like that'd be fun. The the one thing I, I really want to negotiate... Tahiti Road's also really cool. I'm amazed Tahiti Road never reappeared in any other game. There's a lot of uh, tracks from that game. I'm surprised it, like stuff like a Seattle Short never reappeared. I don't know why. It's like another one as well, off the top of my head. But then again, also, Gran Turismo 2's got some weird ones, like, uh, like, I mean, yeah, it doesn't have special stage route 11, but isn't it also kind of weird that, um, Autumn Ring is never used in the entire game? It's there, it appears in arcade mode, but there's not a single, like, cup event that uses it. Look at that, first try. First try. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, like, I, I, I would probably, if I could somehow negotiate the music kind of order detection that is inevitable on YouTube, uh, two cross, 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 I can, I can read, cross over jumps in succession. How many are left, by the way? Looks like six are left. Okay. Um... Also, yeah, two crossover jumps in succession means you got to do four jumps. Oh no. Listen, two two jumps is bad enough. Four is just like, oh Oh boy. That's how you do it. That's how you do it right there. Oh my gosh, why did, why did it just curve so far? I, I wish I I should have my like controller maps like on screen because I swear I like nudged right. I didn't even like lean it that hard. Okay, I don't know, it's okay. Like if you're going far, uh, well, not like that. <laughs> you, got, you gotta somehow keep your speed to keep going. And it does tell you off. Hold on, just as a, just as a demonstration. It does tell you off if you try and go the other- Oh no it doesn't. Actually no it does. Because literally there's a ramp at the other side. So you can't- you can't cheese it. Or at least not that I know of. Maybe someone on speedrun.com. Like the, the three people on earth who knows this game. Does it have a retro achievement set? Maybe it does. I don't know. I wouldn't imagine it'd be anything more than like... Beat stuff. Unlock stuff. You know. Good on retro achievements. I'll, I'll praise it every single time uh, it contextually comes up in a conversation that I may just invent in, in my head, but... Yeah. yeah. I should find a place. Find a place. Figure out how to do Gran Turismo. You can turn off the music, but you turn off all the music. And that's not fun. Uh, and you could play the Japanese version. That's the other, the other one that you could do. Because the Japanese version has the original music, and the original music is uh, fine on on YouTube. Like, it's not gonna get too angry. Um, or you have the the um, the car audio so high up. I should test it. I should really test it. Um, yeah, no, that actually be interesting. Like trying to do just like a start to finish Gran Turismo. Just like you know, what, what events do you do? How do you figure it out? How do you struggle in the license test? You know? Oh my gosh, a, a struggle like this. You know what actually this reminds me of? Um, I played through the first Driver, like, probably this time last year. Um, and I would have mentioned it on, on stream at the time as well. But, uh... <laughs> I can't believe I just drove right past. The Japanese OST is better. Um, I, I do like me some garbage, but, uh, 
I also think my brain will, you know, will, uh, liquefy if I'm constantly listening to the same, like, six songs and one is garbage. I think I'm Paranoid is a better song to, to vibe to in, in the driving games, but, uh, then I've also got to listen to, to Rob Zombie in that game, so, well. At least in the US versions. We got Fat Boy Slim in Europe, so. They censored the title of the song, they can't even say it. Uh, but, uh, for anyone also watching the VOD, it's like, if you've never heard the Gran Turismo's original soundtrack, um, and not just like the menu music, or the menu music is bopping and vibing, and I include it in my stream intermission music all the time. Uh, the Japanese version has, of GD1 has the wall glitch. Uh, oh, the one we speed up. Yeah. The only thing with the Japanese version is that you got to deal with um, decent amounts of Japanese text. It's not unplayable, but it's certainly like uh, might be a bit jarring for 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 some audience. But yeah. And uh, it's not Redbook Audio as well, so you can't just swap the audio, like, cue sheet. Uh, at least not, not that simply. Whoa! First try! That was not, uh, it was 98. There's so many 98s, it's just like, they timed that, they put the platform, well they put the, the trigger just far away enough that it, it actually does get really mean at the very high end, but... Uh... Seems okay for the moment. Bumps and balloons. In this event, you have to 48 seconds to negotiate the bumps and pop all the balloons. 28 seconds or less, less haste, more speed. What does less haste, more speed even mean? Who knows? But sure, I accept your challenge. Clockwork games. Acclaim. Oh no. I appreciate I'm skidding out, and then I know off the top of my head, it's like... Well, just, just to demonstrate as well, it's like... Actually, it's not too bad. Oh, and there's a target at the end, but I think the best thing is probably to do it in two runs. To go forward and then go back. You like how you like how I'm just going too slow for them? You like how I'm just going too slow for the balloons? Like, oh, okay. They're just they're circles. It should be the easiest collision detection in the world. I I just had no attraction then. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is with physics? Like, I really want to know what's the physics in this game. I don't think anyone has any like real like. Crazy interest. I'm probably ripping into this game so much. Like, what if, like, I always wonder, like, you know, what if a developer of the game sees this? They're like, oh, you know, I really wanted to know if someone was playing, uh, you know, Vanishing Point. I, I really enjoyed working on that game. Um, and, uh, then it's like I rip into it so hard. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's so aggravating. I don't know. Um, although they probably got a lot of it at the time. Um, I don't know, if you look at the reviews and... I don't know if the sales of the game were particularly amazing. Probably did the part though, I don't think it was... ...too poor a seller, but... <laughs> it's the same color. It's the same color. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um... I always say this with note, cause like... I'm like knowing of people in the industry and it's just like I I mean like people are nice people like just because you make a bad product doesn't necessarily mean that like you don't know what you're doing it's just you know the project didn't work out you had ideas you committed to one thing it didn't you know work out it happens all the time um 
And I always like, uh, it's it it's it's rough when you're traveling at speed. Like the the car drifts so hard. It it just absolutely pivots in the middle. Um, the hit detection in this is kind of weird. Um, and uh, and especially like when you're driving. Well, most of the most of the game is the tournament mode. Like the mo, I I feel like I'm probably gonna nail all these challenges within one hour, pretty much. Cause like I started doing them at like 45 minutes on stream. It's now an hour 25, so it's been 40 minutes. And this is challenge 11. Oh my goodness. Um, and then like that's kind of it. Like you can try and get a hundred in all the challenges. I don't think you're hard required to do so. Uh, I think you're just kind of expected to... I think there is a reward for getting to the end of the challenge, so... But, like, most of the game is the tournaments, and the tournaments are effectively, like... It's a matrix of... Uh, like, this car, this track... Oh my gosh, like, what? <laughs> oh... That balloon, that balloon is, is not having a fun time. Well, I'm not having a fun time, the balloon is having the fun time, not me. I want to murder the balloons. Oh, oh. Doing, doing a UE is so harsh, because you got to just like, sequential gear down. I mean, I play these games in automatic transmission and I still like... I guess so like antsy if it's like I don't have just a reverse button. Even though I know that's not how it works at all. But it's like, I don't know, Gran Turismo ruined me. It's like you hold down triangle, you go, it'll auto neutrals and reverses for you. That makes sense. Why do I have to shift down and, and do it? There's, there's three buttons. The select button does nothing in this game. There's a free button there. They could totally have done it. They could have map select to the change view. Uh, I think I'm a second over. That's fine. That's fine. I'll accept it. Um, yeah. And uh, at the very least, like, yeah, it's got DualShock control. Although, I swear, I don't know that many games on the PS1 that use uh, both... Um, I would use the, well, the one, use the right stick. Is that a Supra? Uh, yeah, 39 seconds to negotiate the slalom, tag the box. This is just another slalom event, sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's so many games that don't use the right stick. I think the only one I can really think of is uh, Ape Escape. And, like, that, that game is intentional. They know that they're going to use all the, all the buttons. That's what they're designed to do. But then, like, a lot of driving games, it's like, yeah, they'll use the analog stick as a stick, and they'll include the rumble. Uh, but then it's like, well, I mean, I guess in a driving game, like, what do you really use the right stick for? The most you could use it for is analog acceleration, which, it feels odd, and I'm glad they've gone to, like, analog triggers, uh, in future consoles, because it just, it makes way more sense. You know, it's, it's a pedal, you, you, you trigger it, you analog trigger it. so fast in that first corner. Oh, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. No, I'm not. Uh, I didn't even think Ape Escape. Uh, Icy Stunt Copter. I should give that one a go. I should give that one a go. But yeah, like, I, I think I've played... Oh, I, I don't think I can count in my head how many PS1 games I've played. There's definitely a handful of dozens. Don't think it's stretched to a hundred, but I think it's gone past fifty. I've not played. I think I've played. There might be one other game in my head, and the right stick does control the camera, and it's like what? Right. Um. Oh, maybe that's like a first-person shooter one. Like I think uh, Quake Two has like, and and the the infamous Alien Resurrection. Where it's like, the right stick does do... Actually, Alien Resurrection, the right stick does do what you expect a first-person shooter right stick to do. Quake 2, it was... Uh, it was like... Uh, the right stick moved you forward and back. 
Oh no, the left stick moved you forward and back and turned you left and right, and then the right stick strafed and then looked up and down, and I was like, oh, so close. Hump back relay two. You've got to repeat this until the tag counter reaches five. Is this is this the same kind of one as before? Or is this the one with a gap in the middle? Is this the one that made me cry on the inside? Repress memories. This is this might be the one with the gap in the middle, and if it's not, then I don't think it's no. It doesn't have a gap in the middle. It's just back challenge. Oh, but the, the car just goes and spins. I don't think they give you a, a comfy amount of time on this one, though. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so heavy. So here's a question. What's the Nintendo 64 racer of choice? What was, like, the game? The racing game. Nintendo's got F Zero X. That's a that's a clear contender. There also exists Ridge Racer 64, which is fairly acceptable, though uh, it doesn't compare to Ridge Racer Type 4. And now I'm losing time. I think I'll just commit to 84. Uh, I'll just zoom on. That one just seems kind of, like, relatively easy. Like, you can't fail it. You can't really flip the car. Who knows? Uh... Oh, yeah. You see that? I have 1232 points. I need 1346. That is 1346 out of 1400 possible points. That's what I mean. It gets very cruel at the end. So I'd probably have to go back and do the 84. Uh, or at least try and find some lingering points. So, 78 seconds, pop the color balloons, save 20 seconds at the end. Yeah. No, they're mean on that front. They are mean on the, on the very last one. Uh, MRC had a kind of fun gimmick. MRC, which one's MRC? I could do I could do without this mode. I could legitimately do less of this. Okay, turn around. Okay, just go slow over the ramps. I think I should actually just get all of them as I go around the ring. Uh, I'm trying to recall. I must see. Multi racing championship. Basically, you track a multiple on road and off road sections that may be open or closed. Ooh, that sounds neat. Oh, is there probably like a Hot Wheels game on the N64? Got a Hot Wheels game. Why not? No, we're good. We're good. Whoa. Cool. Cool. Double cool. <laughs> Double cool. I, was, I I feel like I got to do perfection now because I've got I'm 120 something points off the off the target. I need a. <laughs> How fast was I going off that jump? Oh, Hot Wheels Terror Racing on the 64 PS1. That was, yeah. All I remember with one of the Hot Wheels games is that uh, it starts off with Metallica's Fuel, which I think is absolutely amazing in a Hot Wheels game. Um, maybe that was a... I don't know why my brain was going like, if it's not Hot Wheels, then it must be Lego. It's not quite right, but... Turbo Racing. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me an desire. 
They're gonna come off to me like they came off the map stuff. <laughs> They're not even in the wrong for the maps to want, it's just more like, you know, you provide a better service. That's how you, uh, you get around piracy. Oh no. I had a good run, I had a good run. And then I botched it. Uh... But you know what I mean? It's like there's a lot of racing games on the PS1. And the N64. Not as many, but they totally did exist. Like, uh, I tried playing, uh, Rally de Africa. Which is a Japan-only, uh, it's Rally, but it's also incredibly arcadey game. And it's, it's brutal difficult. It is brutal. You're like, it's very easily, easily able to just, like, fall off the road. Let's go for it. Alright, look at that. Uh, you know what? LEGO Racers would have been so much better with Metallica in the intro. LEGO Racers is metal as. LEGO Racers is a very metal game. Nothing is better than a kart racer with deterministic items where one is clearly better than the rest. You know? If you're not spamming that turbo warp, you're not doing it right. Uh, that game is amazing. It's got fun tracks. It's got fun tracks. I think people will dismiss it for a lot of things, but the tracks are well worth the admission price. LEGO Races 2 is less interesting. But it's got its charm. I think my issue is that I have no depth perception with these balloons. Alright, I gotta get this green one, and then get the gentle one, and then zoom it. Oh, d no! Listen, I'll, I'll accept 99. Turbo, I thought you were talking about the shield. Uh, <laughs> oh, is the shield the good one? Nah, the turbo's the good one. It gets you to the end of the race in like 30 fewer seconds, and then you have to deal with everyone rubber banding back into you. Alright, I gotta get 15. Which means I could try and nail the humpback relay, or I could just try and get 10 points in this and then like 5 points in another one. I feel much better going for like 94 in this one than actually get 100. But if I do get 100, then sick. Uh, <laughs> I, I do remember this shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's because there's too many corners, and the AI doesn't take the corners as, like, at the same speed as a human, like, has to. That's the big problem with a lot of these games. It's like, it's like, yeah, the, the AI rubber bands, but then it's just like, what does the rubber banding AI actually behave in, like? Um, I noted in this game, it's like, despite the tournaments not being... They're a race against the clock and not against the AI, but then there's AI enemies, and they cheat, and they rubber ban, and they zoom way ahead of you. Oh, I just got it. I just got the hundred, immediately. Okay, well, sure. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll accept this. Okay, so, there's one more event. Uh, I don't think there's anything beyond... There you go. Oh, really? Really, they did put another limit on that. 1466. My estimate was 40. I was very close. My estimate was it was 40 shy of perfect. Okay, so I gotta get this and then oh, I will figure it out. You know what's amazing? The fact that I have been... Like, th this is it. This is the push to the last event. This is, this is certainly it, but... Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Triple crisscross, like really? Like really? <laughs> they don't give you much time as well, you just gotta like, commit. So hard. <laughs> okay, don't commit like that. Don't, don't commit like that. Yeah. 
There you go. And, uh, there's, there's so many reasons to not, like, continue a run. It's like, if you're not going anywhere near as fast as you should I feel like you get an unrealistic amount of airtime from, like, the speed. A little bit of speed difference gets you so much more air. Oh, with Burn and Rubber, that game is a really one-sided rubber banding where the AI will slow down if you're behind, but it won't speed up if you're ahead. Ah, interesting. I, like, like, a uh, one-sided rubber banding I, in that way, like, it, I think it works to some degree. Like, you never want to, like, sorry, you want to make the game easy enough for someone to, to do. But you also, like, if you know that people can be beating the game so much quicker, you don't want to give them the impression that they're absolutely, like, flooring it. Um, but it is interesting. I, I do find, like, kind of, kind of, a, it's a balancing act. I actually, yeah, I, I don't mind that kind of rubber banding of just, like, giving the player the impression that they're really competing. Gosh, I'm never getting past the second jump, let alone the third one. Oh my goodness. You know what I think is also kind of... Just, just rocking back and forth now. You know what's also kind of weird? Uh, the kind of right out in that game didn't drive at half the top speed. Oh, like, like, you can tell they're going way too slow. Oh my goodness, jeez. One thing that, like, really hurts about this game... Actually, sorry, not hurts, but, uh, one thing I, I just remembered. Uh, have you noticed that the game has not been saving at all this entire time? There's an autosave feature and it's off by default, it's very bizarre. I have, I have inexplicably not investigated the options menu when I started playing this game, and I feel like I probably should have, because uh, I think it's like you go into the save menu, and uh, once you save, then the game starts prompting for an autosave, or it like starts doing the autosaves, but until you do it, it doesn't save. And it's a game from 2001, so it, it does the memory card like trivially quick. I'm, I'm amazed by, like, any PS1 game from before 1997, it's like, every time it accesses the memory card, it's so slow, it's it just, it's, it's so painfully slow, I don't know what they were doing. Validating the entire card or something? I don't know. I'm not having a fun time on this ramp, apparently. The worst part is... 1466 demands perfection. It demands that, like... Like, what is, what is that? 1466, that's 44. You literally need to average a 97.08 like, or something. You need you need so many points. Granted, like, yeah, I mean, you can get some hundreds to push it over the edge, but then it's like... How many hundreds? You need... Oh, I did the second jump! I couldn't do the third jump. <laughs> oh my gosh. The worst part is that then you gotta do all that on the way back. Mmm. Uh, mmm. It's the worst feeling. I, I appreciate games that let, let you go. It lets you do your manual saves because there's a lot of games that auto save uh, and do horrendous jobs at it. Uh, I remember playing Ride. And Ride is notorious for working your save files, and you can't turn off the auto save. So the only thing you can do is back up your saver every so often and hope for the best, or possibly set your save file to read only. That's like a classic thing, and, and those games are like that. It's like, oh, we don't have 4K in the menu, but if you set 4K in the config, then the game will try and write over it. But if you set the config to read only, it can't write over it. It's 
so it just reads it and then try actually runs it 4k and runs fine it's stuffed if you're on console servers they're just gonna be saving everywhere oh like i feel like the best bet is maybe if you can ride the uh the um the the, the curb where do you get like this kind of dotted or like yeah, this this blocked curve. I want to see if I can get that lining around my house. Teach the Roomba. I wish I had a Roomba. <laughs> like, teach the Roomba how to how to navigate tight corners, how to you know, out and out. Do Roombas even do out and out, or are they just like we travel at a flat speed? get like other things, you get like just actual remote control cars around the house. I, I don't know why you would, but you know what I mean? See that, that's what I meant. I was kind of fairly, uh, past the beginning of the red. This is rather difficult. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just do a flat like call it at a two hours on stream because that, that was all I was particularly willing to spend time but uh I guess I guess as an overall just like what this game is the controls are aggravating it's it's not not crazy aggravating it's like you can deal with the controls but it's like in the context of quite a bunch of these challenges it's like it's an all or nothing approach it's like you can't kind of do it it's like this is like nah man you just have to nail these jumps like look at that look at that I'm just like barely touching it. I'm barely touching it, but uh, I mean, it makes sense. I, I know I am touching it, but it's like, oh, you know what Gran Turismo has? The presentation, the the, uh, the replay like demo. So you get an example of like how the demo is like absolutely nailing it. And then all you have to do is just recreate that. Which sounds easy enough. Like, recreating a demo just feels so easy. You know? Holy crap! What the heck? What the? <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know what happened there. Oh, what? What? Oh, no. See, at this point, do I go for it? If I can nail both of these... 89s, I'm set. Because that would put me at 1469. So let's try and do this with, like, and yeah, with 10 seconds left. Oh, I actually could do this. I legitimately could get to the end of this mode and actually show you what's at the end of this mode. And then you can take a guess what the rest of the tournament mode is, but at least you don't have to do this mode. I think my problems, I'm drifting too hard there. Alright, no, no, that's good, that's good. Oh. <laughs> the Dodge Viper is a, ta a hard beast to tame. Something something snake metaphor. It bites back, I don't know. I will definitely say the music has not gotten grating, but it kind of has felt like it's all the same kind of idea. I don't know how many tracks there are, but a lot of them, like, you know, start with that kind of like drum and bass intro, and then have like the, the high, like, um, just kind of prompt in there. Whereas well, this one starts with the high, it starts with the sim. How does one even make this kind of synth music nowadays? I'm really curious. I had an idea for a song, um, and I really want to, like, test it out, but effectively the song would be, um, like, very Latin-inspired. 
uh, like a pop song kind of structure. Maybe maybe skip a verse because I, I don't know how to really make multiple verses that interesting unless you just add like an extra element on top in like a secondary verse. Um, but uh, I was thinking like a, like a, just a, a kind of how do I how do I explain it? It's got like a guitar finger finger strummed uh, chords to a rhythm, and the rhythm is very important because it gives it like a, a kind of dance beat. Mm, I think that'll be 98. That'll be 98. Do I commit to 98 or we'll commit to 98, and then I'll I'll see if I can do the 89 with 99. Because now, yeah, that puts me 10 away now. Puts me 10 away. So if I can do this, uh, and if I can't do that, I could probably just do some of the beginning ones again. Because I know I, I, I took like one attempt at the beginning when I said 96. Good enough. It's literally just a jump the first one. I think I could nail four points out of it. So which one was this one? This was a balloon one. Oh, this wasn't the balloon one, was it? It was the balloon one. The one I love the most. Long one as well. Uh, this doesn't work if you don't pull back hard enough. What? Is, what? <laughs> uh, this doesn't work if you're uh, not going fast enough, or you're accurate enough. Uh. I I struggle with doing manual unless I shut up and listen. Um, I can do manual in like F1, but then it's like a lot of the time I do sit down and I try and listen to like music or something else, or I chat to friends and I, I just kind of condition myself to I, I, I'm not really doing the shifts well. That's pretty much it. Like I, I could probably do the shifts if I'm really like listening out for it, but when I'm not, it's, it's tough for me. Also, I don't drive in real life, so I feel like it's a it's a learned experience. Like maybe once you're really driving and you can listen out for the shifts, because even if you drive automatic, like you still gotta like know when your car is shifting, right? I don't think that spin's gonna be good, but like like you gotta know when your car is like shifting, because uh, it saves you petrol if you're on high gear when you when you can be. Instead, sometimes you stick your car on cruise control, and it's like, oh, I'm gonna be in low gear. Why not? But I hope this game isn't doing like the Daytona thing of like, oh, the the manual transmission just casually goes faster. Like, not not the fact that you're doing the shifts better than the automatic transmission does, but the fact that. They just reserve the top speed. A little surprise, uh, you're listening for when you shift, personally I look out for one. Yeah, like, uh, I, I mean, it's just when you hit the red, right? Or well, not even when you hit the red, it's before you hit the red. I've given myself enough time to do this any faster. And I'm also on the wrong side of the road. Cool. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should really learn how to, like, how to really nail manual transmission. Because I think it is an art. A good skill to have. I do, I do say that, like, when I start driving, I feel confident in, like, shut up and driving the... Um, with a manual with a stick. I know, I know my mum has driven for her family in a manual, but she doesn't drive the manual anymore. Uh, so maybe I could ask her for some advice. Oh 
boy. Oh boy, I'm coming at this from a really weird angle. Ah, oh, dang it. Is it 10 seconds left over or 20? I feel like I'm taking way too long. That's when you play, get comfortable in Grand Prismo, you can pull off some... Oh, true, true. There's some funky ways a lot of old games work with the manuals. I think I'm nailing this. I think I'm getting this quite right, but... Yeah, I think the time, the time is 20 seconds. Jeez. That wasn't any better. That wasn't any better than the first time. It's for... G GT1 seems tricky, but also, do you need to, to break GT1? Like, I don't know, GT1 breaks itself in miraculous ways. Oh, yeah, that's my, that's my issue. I'm not doing my U-turns good. But I need to, I need to find the, the key. Like, yeah, there's so much, like, traction loss when trying to do these U-turns. Alright, here we go, here we go. I'm really feeling it. This is good. One balloon left on the shelf. There you go. Look at that. Hundo. Okay. So what is your reward for getting... For struggling. For getting all the points that you need in order to access the thing at the end. Oh, wow. It's the x-ray car. He's still on the uh, on the right hand drive. Oh, that was it. I didn't I didn't hit any buttons. Congratulations, you have completed stunt driver, a and yeah. But now you can get the one make series. What what is the one make series? I believe the one well one it it just tells you. It it it, ju it just says activate by holding R one while selecting single race. I don't know if that's actually like a thing at all. I didn't unlock any cars. I don't know why the music isn't playing, but sure. Uh, but also, yeah, do you like how I only have... By the way, 13, 13 tracks, there's eight on this list. I think actually, hold on, if you go to time trial, I'm pretty sure they, they're cheating when they say there's 13 because four of them are dedicated to the two-player mode. One is the test track that you do when... when uh, Picking your car. So there's really only eight tracks. And they're not the longest tracks in the world. So, okay, I'm holding R1. I'm holding R1. I think all this does, all this does is uh, make it so every car on the track is mine. I think that's all that does. What an amazing cheat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... There's no payoff for any of it. You get a sense of pride and accomplishment. You, you, you know, you put in the effort. You beat Vanishing Point's uh, stunt driver mode. Is that my car? Or maybe this guy with the, with the... That is not my car. That's a Ford Focus. What is a single make car? The single make category is bull honky. Oh, I guess that one in front of me is. Not, not the mini that I just devoured. 
Like, this blue guy is totally my car, because he's got the convertible on the top. Actually, uh, is that my car? I don't think it is. I don't, nah, that's not my car. This is not a single make race. So, uh, so yeah, for reference, Basil, this is the actual game mode. No, it's not even a race. It's a time trial. I have a set time of 2 minutes 06.84 I'm trying to beat. And the entire tournament mode is that. You, you just do that. You race the clock, and then it arbitrarily puts you a position if you didn't beat the, the target time, and you get points awarded for that. But, like, you don't know at all how far back you're ending up. Are you playing a racing game that does arguably worse? Oh boy. How much worse can you get than this? This... Like, the worst part about this is that it doesn't feel like they couldn't do AI, because they clearly have AI. It's just they... They decided to not make it a simple first person past the line. They just decided to make it a time trial. That's really it. Because the AI obviously works, or does it. Did they say the AI is too inconsistent and decide to go, nah, nah, I'm not doing that. So, the single race mode is literally... I just got a new course. Oh, did I just get the reverse course? Or, oh my gosh, do I have to do this in order to get... Do I have to unlock all the tracks by doing... <laughs> By doing them in single race. Maybe I should have done that to begin with. If only I knew. I really want to show off the Midnight Highway, so I'm going to I'm going to push for this. I'm going to push for this just so I can show off the Midnight Highway. I'm not going to show all the tracks. And I wish there was a cheat code. I wish there was something I could do to to at least like whiz through the rest of the content. Um, granted, that was kind of on me because I spent an hour 20 doing the stunt driver mode. But I did the stunt driver mode. Racing on 15 different tracks eight times each and your reward for beating the opponents and overcoming the wonky physics is you get to do it all over again in reverse. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to recall, like, I've probably played another driving game and it's just like, it's, it's the same deal. It's just doing the same events in different cars and calling it a day. There's like, there's some merit to that. Like, not saying every game should be like that, but just like, giving me a contextual reason to try and be every car in every race, or at least like a lot of different cars in a lot of races, makes sense. It's just when it doesn't feel different, when, <laughs> when so many of the cars feel the same, like, yeah, I mean, the Dodge Viper felt different, but I feel like this car feels a lot like the beginning car. Uh, or the other car that you begin the game with. And then on top of that, like, man, the tracks kind of feel mostly the same. Actually, did did we see this track already? Or this one's actually... I think this one's actually new. I don't recall seeing this bridge today. Oh my gosh, I'm getting, like, T-Bone. T-Bone? That's not it. Just rear-ended. All the places. Yeah, yeah. I I feel like the the reward isn't crazy there with this game, and uh, if you're not a fan of how drifty the car gets, like oh my gosh, but the tracks are never that demanding either. Like this game isn't too difficult. It's unfair when the physics just don't work out. But none of the corners really require you to even like break hard. They're just like, they're just, you know, big wide sweeping corners. And the traffic's there, but you don't have to really negotiate with like four lanes of traffic. You just have to negotiate with that. You have to negotiate with like the AI people, like screwing everything over. Or doing that. Oh, and like, oh no, the front of the car's kind of drifting out. Just release it. Release accelerating. Just lean left. You'll, you'll straighten out. Why is there a shuttle launch here? Why, why is there a space shuttle launch right here? I, I, I'm just curious. There's two of them as well. Oh, there's another one right there. They're launching two on the same day. 
and that train just undid itself. You see that train undo itself? I think it's just to, yeah, just so I could uh, zoom on ahead above. Oh boy, now I'm looking at all the scenery. Oh no. Uh, so yeah, would I recommend this game? Uh, mm, listen, if you're looking for a PS1 racer, you can give it a try. I don't know where this game exists nowadays. Uh, I guess that's that's the interesting thing. Like, yeah, the developers don't exist. The claim doesn't exist in its own way. Um, this game only ever got a PlayStation 1 and a Dreamcast version. And obviously, the Dreamcast version isn't going to be floating around anymore. There's a lot of Dreamcast games that just don't exist. Because, yeah. You know, who, who maintains Dreamcast games? I guess Sega needs to port them onto other systems, but... Although I guess there's some, like, Metropolis Street Racer is just lost into the void. That game, that game deserves justice. Stuff it. Just put down this game. Play Metropolis Street Racer. It came out the same year and it's just infinitely a better game. It, it's, it's such a jam. Now Metropolis Street Racer is definitely one of those, oh boy, it's not the most interesting to... To stream kinds of games, but it's it's certainly a great one. Would highly recommend. All right, so if the game is nice enough and it's going to give me the Midnight Highway, then that's oh oh no, I hit view replay. Now I gotta watch the view replay. Or I gotta hit stop. Oh. <laughs> okay, I got it. The replay system is okay. I'll just say that. Do you like how the interlacing, like, kicks in a moment because it's, it's running interlaced on the menus with the car rotating? Alright, single race. Mustang. Midnight Highway. This is the track that separates the boys from men, and maybe forest fields. But this track is like, this is where your car goes to die. I do remember this one, and it's just because of, like, the weird, like, um, I guess half-pipe-style roads that it just introduces. It's, uh, it doesn't make real sense. So, again, it's a four-lane road. Sure. It's just that one point. It decides to go, like, ah, okay. But you know what? Hey, it's also a nighttime course. And there's headlights on, so they put in the effort to do that. Yeah, I, I think the real big thing is that it goes, like, downhill, and then uphill quite a bit, but, like, really downhill. I don't know if that's tracky drive on up there. I don't think it is. Nah, it wouldn't be. That'd be kind of cool if you, you could. I always found that it was fascinated. Anytime you had roads going over other roads, or pathways leading over other paths, because it made me think, wow, you know, they're making me think three-dimensionally about this. This, this, like, slope already goes down. I don't know what those signs say, by the way. They are so blurry. Reduce speed. Have a nice day. Stay in lane. CCTV in use. Here's the, here's the half pipes. This is what I mean. Like, if you stay in the middle, you're fine. If you dare touch any of the edges, you're, you're just gone. Like, hold on, I'll demonstrate. So, yeah, you see what I mean? It's like, you just you just go somewhere. I, I of course, a three-car pileup. I, I, this is, yeah, it's it's a bit of a whack. A whack scenario. We'll finish this race, we'll commit, we'll save the game. Hey, they got the cool trains. They got the train stashing over you. That's cool. I can redeem this. I can redeem the time. It feels like it just goes downhill forever, this track. It's like, the uphills don't feel too uphill. But then it's just like, oh no, that's the bridge, that's the end of the track. I just gotta rinse and repeat and do it uh, for a second lap. I wonder if uh, these uh, sidecars are... Oh, oh. He's, he's going, he's gonna commit. He's just gonna commit going forward. 
Okay, sure. Let's go. That's that's what people say, right? Oh. Yeah, it's a piece of a uh, PlayStation One uh, and Dreamcast, I guess. It exists in its own kind of world. Uh, barely really left a legacy, but listen, I remember it, I guess. And uh, it gets it kind of interested um, in talking about like this, you know, AI. It's not exactly a knockoff game either. It's not like Sega GT or um, Forza, where they clearly saw the structure of Gran Turismo and said, let's try and do that. It's like, this tries to be its own arcade thing, but then taps upon some potentials of Gran Turismo. Like, it's got the nighttime highway level, it's got the, effectively, the license tests. Um, I'm got no traction for it. <laughs> Uh, it's got that, uh, but then it's got this arcade -y mode in the middle, and it's like, yeah, okay, like, that's what they were going for. Bit Need for Speed? Yeah, a bit of that, actually. Yeah, you're right. Like, um, yeah, particularly, like, uh, uh, Hot Pursuit. The, the 98 one, the third game. But that game's got some pretty wild tracks. I guess Need for Speed 2 has also got some real wild tracks. Um, I, should I should definitely give it a another go. Maybe I'll give it another go. Forge Unleashed is definitely one that's like sleeper good. And also, Forge Unleashed is different on the PC and the PlayStation, which makes it kind of interesting for people who only played one of those versions. Uh, there you go, so. Uh, so, yeah, it's a driving game, where you unlock videos of an x-ray guy driving a car. That is right, by the way. Uh, after winning the, the stunt driver, you get this piece of 10 seconds. I, what I find amazing is the fact that there's intro movies, there's vanishing point here, which is the, the thing that runs when you start the game. There's one that says Clockwork. I'm very certain it's just the company's logo. Why is that not animated and not shown? It, it, you have to unlock the company's logo. So have some credits so you know who made the game. At least you can scroll it. Look at that. John Ma. Lovely John Ma. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's like a handful of people, some vehicle consultants, samplers. People for the. Alright, it's just a music team. A bunch of QA people, and then. Special thanks. Oh, rip, Kevin. Rip. There you go. That's who made the game. So, to. Uh, to the memory card where the autosave is off for some reason. Who knows? Yep. Save the settings. I'm not turning off, there we go. And now we save the actual game. Okay. So you never get, you never get to play as the neon wireframe skeleton driver. Nah. He exists on his own. Uh, also, nothing is going to beat... Uh, what is it? Single race on... Look at those little cars! Look at them go! I can't see my time on, uh, on Olympic Village, because I haven't unlocked it in the other mode. But I've clearly driven this track three times, so... Okay. <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, I guess with that, that's enough of this game, so I would like to say thank you so very much for watching. If you did enjoy this game, uh, then... Oh boy. But if you did, if you didn't enjoy this game, uh, also, oh boy. But if you like the stream, I guess, if you like the stream, uh, you missed out bits on it, it'll be on YouTube, don't worry. Uh, and if you want to see more stuff, you can just go on YouTube, and that's where all the VODs are, where I will ramble about whatever topic I think of at the time. Some of the games I actually beat on that channel, I think I've been, how many games have I been since I've been streaming? I want to say like 12 now. I think quite a bit, so. Um, and yeah, I got a new game I want to play next week, so don't worry. Um, 
But I thought this would be a nice, like, little, little detour. Something neat, something cool. Uh, somehow I beat the, the stunt driver mode in one stream. I, even I didn't even expect that. Listen, I, I surprised even myself. So, thank you all very much. Stay safe, eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and uh, give me fuel, give me fire, give me now which I desire. I don't know. <laughs> Catch you, fellas.